This is Valley News Live at noon. And we start with the breaking news just into our newsroom. The Ottertail County Sheriff's Office is investigating the shooting deaths of two people in rural Battle Lake, Minnesota. Deputies were called to a home just before 2.30 yesterday afternoon and discovered the bodies of a 59-year-old man and 58-year-old woman. Investigators believe this to be a murder-suicide, and they say there is no known threat to the public. Also, just into our newsroom, new information on the investigation into a proposed merger which could have far-reaching impacts to health care across the region. Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison just wrapped up a news conference announcing next steps in the investigation into the proposed Sanford Fairview Health merger. Ellison wants to hear what you think, saying public input can be submitted on the Attorney General's website or by calling an 800 number. We have all of that information on our VNL News app. Well, taking a look at our sky cam right now, things are looking very clear. It looks like that sky is actually looking pretty nice. Let's send things over to meteorologist Lisa Green with a few more details. Lisa. Good afternoon. Yes, we are in the midst of some quiet weather and not just quiet, but a warm up. We don't often get to enjoy both of those things at the same time. And in Fargo, we're at 25 degrees, blue sky, lots of sun, as you see in the background of our view here. And in Grand Forks, we're at 24. It's 31 in Jamestown and already to 30. 3 degrees in Bemidji. So some of us really warming already above the freezing mark. Detroit Lakes and Devils Lake checking in at 27. So here's a look at our visible satellite map. You can see where the snowpack is with the clear skies. Lots of it here in eastern North Dakota. And you can see where the clouds are still working on departing parts of Beltrami County where you see some movement in the gray view there. And then of course those conifer evergreen trees are showing up in our view as well. Not necessarily quite showing the snowpack there, but that system that brought us that light snow early Earlier today, moving on. If you're doing some traveling here today, maybe uh, taking to the airways, well, here's a look at what to expect. We've got a big system that's going to hamper travel quite a bit up in the Pacific Northwest and some heavier rain, especially along the eastern panhandle of Florida here this afternoon. Here's a look at our tree lighting forecast. If you're heading out tonight for the big tree lighting ceremony, well, we're looking at temperatures that are going to be into the 20s. It'll be dry and light wind. You'll still need to dress for the weather. You'll want to bundle up, but we've had much more uh, cold events but in the past. So not too bad out there tonight and beautiful today with that sun. Yeah, not too bad at all. Lisa, thank you so much. Well, verbal and emotional abuse. Those are the claims from current and past NDSU cheerleaders describing their now former coach, Verona Winkler. Now we received several messages from former students who were a part of the NDSU cheer squad and are claiming the bad treatment from Winkler goes back years. They say she forced students to practice while injured, addressed a student's weight in front of others, and would make threats of violence. We interviewed 10 former cheerleaders about allegations against Winkler and requested on several occasions to interview Winkler, but were denied by NDSU's athletic director and associate athletic director. Tonight on Valley News Live, you can catch the second part of our investigation. We'll hear from a former cheerleader who says that he was forced to perform with an injury. The West Fargo Police Department is just about ready to roll out a new dashboard that will give the public real-time access to crime trends, arrest data, crashes, traffic stops, and much more. Police Chief Dennis Otters says the community transparency dashboard is meant to do just that, create transparency and enhance trust between the police department and the community. Now, the dashboard has been in the works for nearly a year and has a collaborative effort between their criminal intelligence analysis, GIS, and communications staff. Now, almost all information will be public with the exception of open and active cases. Certain data will also be left out to protect crime victims, particularly juveniles. Now, they are working on integrating the dashboard into the current police department page on the city website with hopes of launching the dashboard sometime next week. We're learning more about the five people killed when a gunman opened fire at a gay nightclub in Colorado. Now, police say 17 people were injured in the attack. Colorado Springs officials have also named the two patrons who subdued the shooter and appraised them as heroes. Johnny Bacchus introduces us to one of those good Samaritans, a military veteran who describes how he helped tackle and disarm the shooter.
I'm not a hero, I'm just some dude. Richard Fierro didn't think twice about stopping the gunman who opened fire in the middle of a Colorado Springs nightclub Saturday night. I hit him with the, the gun, his gun, not mine. I grabbed it and I hit him with it. I kept hitting with it. The U.S. Army veteran who was at the club with his wife, daughter, and her boyfriend, Raymond Green Vance, says he wanted to save his family. That family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Vance, along with Ashley Paw, Kelly Loving, and bartenders Derek Rump and Daniel Aston were killed. My daughter got to spend her last day with him happy. Five crosses have been placed at this growing memorial outside of Club Q. The city's mayor says he doesn't want his community to be defined by the tragedy, but the response. Too often, uh, society loses track of the victims of these sad and tragic events. We strive to give the victims the dignity and respect that they deserve. Tributes continued Monday in Colorado Springs and other cities. The Denver City and County Building was lit up in pride colors overnight, while vigils were held in North Carolina and Washington, D.C. Love one another. Be your true, authentic self. Police are still determining the motive of the suspect, 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, who remains hospitalized. He faces five counts of first-degree murder and five counts of committing a bias-motivated crime. Don Ubacus, CBS News, Colorado Springs. Aldrich is expected to make his first court appearance in the coming days. And a candlelight vigil is planned tonight in downtown Fargo in memory and support of the victims of the Colorado shooting over the weekend. The vigil is at 6 p.m. at Broadway Square. And that's the same time the tree lighting ceremony is planned in Broadway Square tonight. Officials with the Fargo Park District say that they are aware of the vigil and have reached out to the host to try to find a way that both events can happen at the same time. Fargo Parks is expecting 1,500 people at the tree lighting tonight. An environmental nonprofit group is pushing for electric vehicle chargers at Fargo apartment buildings. The Citizens Local Energy Action Network started circulating a petition to encourage the Fargo City Commission to consider making EV chargers a requirement for both existing and proposed multifamily buildings. The group contacted Commissioner John Strand, who recommended Fargo Sustainability and Resilience Committee discuss the idea first. And that's happening at the meeting at Fargo City Hall at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And AAA is working to keep impaired drivers off of the road during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend, even if they aren't members of the Auto Club group. AAA is activating its Tow to Go program from 6 p.m. tomorrow through 6 a.m. Monday. The program provides a confidential local ride for one person and their vehicle to a safe location within a 10-mile radius. It's available in North Dakota and nine other states. Tow to Go cannot be scheduled in advance. It is designed as a safety net for those that did not plan ahead and should be treated as a last resort. Coming up at noon, a race against the clock as search and rescue teams dig through the rubble for earthquake survivors. But next, Lisa Green has your weather to plan your day.